There's red carpets, there's poopoos. They're surrounded by these luxury cars. They played the trailers of our films inside of the BMWs. Like, you never get an experience like that. The process really ended at the final HIF gala event, which is known as kind of the Oscars of Hawaii. You get to see all of the stars there. We're eating this big, fancy, I don't know how many course dinner together, hearing all the speeches. Don Lee has like this big persona in his movies, right? But he's actually like quite quiet and quite humble IRL. When you're boxed into one particular job for so long, you know, it starts to feel like, okay, maybe I've told all the stories that I have in my pocket. Don't think just because you've done one project or multiple projects that people are gonna be like, oh, you're so great, you're our leader now. No, you have to continue to work hard. How about let's start with um, telling me about the job you've been doing and then, you know, stuff that you've been working on recently. Kind of just up me, up, update me on that a little bit. Sure. So right now I'm working as a communication specialist up at the Capitol, specifically for the Senate. And what we do is we try to increase public trust in government through the creation of intentional and hopefully authentic content. So I've been working mostly in photo and video, photographing the different hearings that are going on at the Capitol right now in anticipation of our opening day, and also doing some Canva graphics. Um, the most recent project that we did in anticipation of our opening day that we made available to the public was we actually did a lip sync video to the song for the first time in forever from Frozen to kind of build up the anticipation for the idea that opening day is coming. On the side, I've been doing short film content. So before the new year, in the latter half of December, I helped Cody with his experimental project. And then now I'm ADing and editing his short. And then in February, I'll be helping some of our other film school classmates, um, Florence and Naomi, with Florence's upcoming sort of independent, um, experimental documentary short. So it's the government thing for, you know, kind of my main weekday, eight to 4.30 job. And then on the side, on the weekends, it's film. Am I tripping or you worked with HIF for a period of time? Oh, yes. So that was prior to um, the start of the new year. So I worked with HIF from August of 2023 until like the first two weeks of December was my last day. So I worked as an education and outreach associate and I helped sort of facilitate all of the different educational programs that HIF was putting on for that year, guest filmmaker visits, school screenings. And then on the outreach side, I also helped reach out to different community partners to see if they'd be willing to promote the festival within their networks. And that was also around the same time that Nyari was playing in HIF. So I got to do a little bit of a mix of work and play. I got to experience the filmmaker side and the film festival organizer side. So that was fun. Right, right. Let's let's explain the terms real quick. HIF is Hawaii International Film Festival, right? And then Kunyari is uh, our capstone film that you wrote, that I DP'd for you, um, that was in the film festival and then uh that's that's the terms so people know what what we're talking about um that's that's so interesting how did you ended up uh getting this job uh, what's your job title again right now with the with the capital um communication specialist okay how did you ended up finding this job so around my last couple of weeks of hif I realized that I was going to be unemployed in the new year. That kind of scared me. So I was like, I'm going to go online and see what listings are on Indeed.com. And that was sort of the first thing that popped out to me because it wasn't like the regular, you know, photo videography jobs that required a lot of experience or required a lot of, you know, going around to different places on island. I liked that it was centralized. I liked that, you know, I had sort of this community service aspect to it. So I applied, I interviewed, and I got the job. And two weeks into the new year, here we are. 
All right. Well, that's that's so interesting. You know, uh, just seeing people in our program going on to do different things. You know, mostly I would say camera related stuff. Right. Um, we, we are still, you know, pretty loosely related to what we got got a degree in. Right. Definitely. All right. Well, I I think. Uh, when I think about you, one of the things that remind me is that you are a very organized person um, and then you are just uh, the way that you directed uh, your capstone film reminded me of this modest person who knows what they're doing, essentially. Thanks, no, really. Um, I, I want to talk about that today uh, with you because how did, how did, so Kunyali wasn't your first film, right? Right. It was my third in our program and my fourth overall. Right. So at that point, um, you probably accumulated some sort of experiences right making short films making uh making content like that can you talk me through the making of kunyali and and that film as a finishing piece for your academic career at the program sure so the process for creating kunyari started i believe summer of 2022 maybe a couple weeks earlier than that because I knew that going into spring 2023, I wanted to pitch for a project. I didn't know what the project was, but I knew that I had to prepare a whole semester in advance because in order to do the project in spring 2023, you have to pitch in fall 2022. So I started with a couple of ideas and then this whole idea of, you know, somebody being in a fake relationship with their ex and struggling to be authentic with themselves spoke to me because even though I didn't have a similar experience to that at that point in time, I was struggling with feeling authentic to myself with others in my interpersonal relationship. So I just kind of injected those sort of doubts and insecurities that I was having at the time about myself into the main character. And I feel like that carried me through the experience of making the film even though I wasn't too well versed on the whole relationship side, I could relate to this sort of internal monologue that the character was having with themselves. So fall 2022 was all about recruiting the crew. I recruited you. I recruited Serene. I recruited Cody. I recruited all of our friends to hop on this project. And then spring 23 was really when we hit the ground running. We had three weeks of principal production, and then that took us all the way until summer of 2023 when we finished editing the film then it went on to premiere at hif which was world premiere and a couple of weeks within the premiere we learned that we actually won the hif x bmw driven student filmmaker award and i have although the festival only recognized one recipient of the award i attribute it to our entire team because it was really you guys who kept me driven like i've never worked with a crew that was that big, but also took so much agency in making the vision their own. Like, I really respected that about our team. Everybody was like, you know, this is not just J.O.'s vision. We're going to inject a little bit of ourselves into that as well. Like, I loved our little trio, you, me, and Alex, because we were always bouncing off each other. Like, Alex would make sure that the footage was cutting well together after we shot it. You were making sure we were getting the right angles. And... Nobody was too precious about what they were doing. Nobody was too possessive. Nobody was like, oh, this is my job. You know, I'm only going to handle the camera. Like, I feel like at some points, you know, I kind of stepped back because I could see that, you know, you wanted to get in on the directing too. And I was like, hell yeah, Daniel, like, go for it. Like, I feel like some of the party shots were partially directed by you. And I never got to thank you for that. But like, you did such a great job of being like, okay, this is what I see in frame extras. So make sure that you stay here, but also here's, how the game works he kind of reiterated you know what my intention was and i love that like i love that collaborative process so the award was really for the team and then now we're just waiting for other festivals and i hope that we get to do more because it's a project that deserves to be shared 
Thank you for your kind words, first of all. Uh, I really appreciate, you know, that project as well. I think being on that project was a precious opportunity for all of us uh, at the program to get to know each other better and then to really get better at our crafts, you know, also just, you know, make something awesome, right? And at the end of the day, I think we, we got to that point and, um, you know, the proof is... I guess, you know, award that we're getting, right? Um, talk me a little bit through the uh, film festival experience. So, um, you know, as a student filmmaker, right, you enter the festival as a student filmmaker with a student film and then winning an award. How, how does that whole process work and how did you, um, yeah, just talk me through that process a little bit. Yeah, so you submit on this website called Film Freeway. I kind of like to think of it as the common app, but for films. And as people can guess from my description of that process, film festivals are very much like getting into college. You submit all the applications online, you pay the submission fees, but that's no guarantee that you're going to get in. So you're just kind of waiting for the first couple of weeks. And then after a while... We got, you know, our lucky letter that we got in, the team celebrated, we're all texting each other, you know, we did it, yay. And then now we're building up anticipation for our premiere, we're putting out graphics, we're working with the festival to make sure that we give them the proper file so that it can play at the venue. Um, HIF got us this awesome IBM venue outside. It was really pretty. I'm not sure what you thought of it. We haven't really talked about, you know, sort of debriefed about what we thought of the venue and what we thought of the overall experience, but I thought it was great. I mean, what did you think about, you know, the experience of kind of sitting in that venue and getting to experience our films together with other shorts? Mm -hmm. I, I thought it was wonderful. Um, just got to, got a chance to see all the other peers um, that, you know, were chasing the same goal or same dream. Uh, show up in an event like that, I think it was really inspiring. And um, uh, especially when you see something that you made put on the big screen, that's a whole different experience, right? I, I think a lot of times, you know, you make a video and then you put it on your monitor, you watch it on your phone. But sitting down with other people, that's why people say film is a communal experience, right? Because you sit down with other people watch something you make on screen, it's a whole nother different experience. And then the venue was great, it was outdoor, right? We had people from other schools showing up, uh, just saying hi, it was kind of like a reunion in a, in a sense. So I really liked it. For sure. And I think one of the highlights of having it at the IBM building is we were one of, if not the biggest premieres at HIF that season, because our event, could fit like 300 people. And I think close to like 200 showed up. So we definitely had one of the biggest, if not the biggest premieres there that season. And then continuing on talking about the film festival process just with HIF, um, we waited for a couple more days. And then finally at the BMW Meet the Filmmakers event, which took place at the BMW of Honolulu, they announced that we had won the award. And I really wish that, you know, the whole team could be there because there was just all this pomp and circumstance, this big fanfare. I mean, there's red carpets, there's poopoos, you're surrounded by these luxury cars. And I'm pretty sure you saw this on like other people's IGs. They played the trailers of our films inside of the BMWs. Like you never get an experience like that anywhere else in the world. And the fact that they opened that up to students, and the fact that, you know, they just made this opportunity available and that community partners were involved, it speaks volumes to this idea that Hawaii is really investing in its youth and their access to film. And to have a big partner as BMW be kind of, you know, the leader in that arena, it means a lot. So we got the big check there. It was all the buzz on Instagram for the next couple of days. And then the process really ended at the final HIF gala event, which is known as kind of the Oscars of Hawaii. You, know, you get to see all of the stars there. We're eating this big, fancy 
I don't know how many course dinner together, hearing all the speeches. And then they finally give us the award, which I do have over here. So I'm going to step out of frame and grab it. So they present us there with this. Go. We get to do a little speech about it. And then that really ends the experience. But, you know, getting to interact with people that night, that was probably my best part because they're not just interested in learning about the film, but they're also interested in learning about you as a person and vice versa. And I feel like that's my favorite part of the process, just getting to know people whose films you admire and look up to so much on a deeper level than just, hey, we're two filmmakers, but also, hey, we're both people. Like, let's talk about our lives. Let's talk about how we could possibly collaborate in the future. That was my favorite part. Yeah, uh, it's it's just so exciting listening to that. Can you, how, how was the gala? What was, what was it like? I, I know there's... Um, couple of people there's that korean star uh that famous yes. actor that showed uh, right the one that was in eternals um his name is escaping me right now but he's a really big yeah sort of korean action superstar don lee there mm -hmm. that's his name yeah 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 um, how was how don, was that don lee has like this big persona in his movies right but he's actually like quite quiet and quite humble irl like, I don't think I saw him all that much that night. I think I just saw him, like, do his speech. And then, you know, he was kind of around for dinner. But being around, you know, all these people that you've kind of, you know, known or followed their work for a while or, you know, you've seen them on the big screen, you get kind of starstruck for the first couple of minutes. Then you start to learn their real personalities. And you're like, oh, my God, I want to know you as a friend. I want to know you as, like, an actual person because you're just so interesting. And the best possible thing to happen is when they express interest with you first. And that's what happened when I met Taisanga. Because Taisanga was like, oh, I know your work. And I'm like, you're Taisanga? You know my work? Oh, my God. <laughs> like, I watch your films in school. How, how do you know me? It was awesome. Yeah, Tai is great. Um, I love interacting with Taisanga. Um, Lance Collins, the writer of My Partner, he was great. We bonded a lot. Um, and also the writers and producers and directors of a film called Asog, which was a Filipino film that won the Rising Star Award at HIF. They're such a great team and they're so passionate about their project. So again, just this interaction with everyone, like the room was electric. It was a buzz with life. It was awesome. I, I guess um, people who are in film schools maybe right now, right? Like I, if I think back, they they really need to get to know the film festivals, especially For locally, sure. right? This is the type of things um, that you can get a, get a taste of. And it's, once you are in the festival, that's a whole different thing, right? And then not just the, like you said, not just the, oh yeah, I did a great work, but it's that uh, relationship building, connection making, and then knowing there's other people who are um, better at doing some of the, the crafts that you're doing, right? And then getting to know them personally. Um, it's all about the connection, right? It's about relationships in this part. So I encourage, you know, whoever um, is in, in film school right now, you know, check out your local film festival, go support them, go volunteer for them or submit your film, right? Because it's, it's really helpful in the long run. And then and then coming back to talk about this, I know that um, you you have the stream of um, starting a film festival back home. Is that still something that you are passionate about? Definitely, for sure, especially after my experience with HIF. Um, and I want this film festival that I start someday to have a huge educational component as well, because working with education was like my favorite part of working with HIF, even more than like, you know, being the star for a little bit, having my 15 minutes of fame on the red carpet and meeting all these celebrities, local celebrities, getting to interact with kids and bringing filmmakers to their schools and seeing, you know, their eyes light up every time they ask a question or just the passion that they have for media. Like it hasn't dulled the way some people's passion has 
once they start to grow older. I feel like as you start to grow older, there's this potential for somebody to grow a little bit cynical about some things, especially when it comes to media, because it's a career that could very easily burn you out. But these kids just love what they're doing. Like they love knowing that, you know, this person who is not that much older than me did it so I could do it too. So I would love to have a huge educational component where I just invite all the schools to come out and participate and, you know, bring people who have worked in the field to them too, because they love that as well. So yes, the dream is still there and it's still very much alive. I don't know if I would like to be the one to run it because I haven't had just yet that experience in overall facilitation of a film festival. I was very much centralized in education. But with the right people, I feel like it could still pan out. Right, right, right. So um, moving forward, I guess, are you are you seeing yourself making more short films or are you going to stick with the communications uh, route or are you looking to be in more film festivals? What's the future like? Definitely a mixture of all three of those things, more so on the film festival and the filmmaking side. Right now, I feel like I'm in a season of my life where I want to be just a follower for a little bit as I wrote and directed back to back to back in film school. And as much benefits as that reaped me, I also want to see what it's like, you know, just kind of being in someone's corner for a little bit, cheering them on and seeing how my talents develop from being someone's editor or being someone's AD or being someone's camera person, you know, how else can Justin Ocampo as a creative develop other than just boxing myself into um, writing and directing. And I feel like this season of my life will help me birth new stories as well. Because when you're boxed into one particular job for so long, you know, it starts to feel like, okay, Maybe I've told all the stories that I have in my pocket, so I'm going to stop for a little bit. And I never want that to happen to me. Like, I always want there to be this source of inspiration. And I feel like just working with fellow creatives for now, kind of following them, will help me find that joy again. So following for now, for sure. All right. All right. Um, sp speaking of that, I not, you know, because I've talked to mostly people from our program, right, back back at school. And then just kind of, it, it's so interesting to see where everybody's at at this point, right? Because some people are working on production, some people are, are making short films, some people are um, doing other jobs. But I think something I appreciate and I keep saying about film school uh, is, you know, the connections I made throughout the the program throughout the years studying there and um if if you are speaking to yourself when you first got into college uh what kind of advice would you give to your old self i love that you asked me this question because i just presented about this very topic to um the high schoolers this past weekend at the shoot summit my whole presentation was about you know things I did when I was your age to get from point A, where I could barely operate a camera, to point B, where I am now, where I'm an award-winning filmmaker. And what I told them was, when you enter a new environment like film school, or even where they're at right now, just you know, as a middle school or high school media student, you need to be proactive about chasing your lesson. Because you can't just kind of passively accept what life gives you and hope, oh, okay, now that I've you know kind of very passively done a couple of films, people will just hand me rolls on a silver platter. Like, that's not really how it works. There's this great quote that Lizette, one of our professors in film school, likes to use in a producing class. And it's a quote from Orson Welles. Orson Welles once said, filmmaking is 2% movie making and 98% hustle. And I feel like if you're only chasing the 2% movie magic, you're missing out on the other 98% of the experience. So to people who are about to enter film school, and to the younger version of myself who is about to enter film school, don't think just because you've done one project or multiple projects that people are going to be like, oh, you're so great. You're our leader now. No, you have to continue to work hard in every space that you enter to continually prove yourself. 
but also just build that network. Like that's what comes with chasing your lesson. You find people who respect you both as somebody they could collaborate with, but also somebody they could mentor. Like that's how you get people's attention. You just work hard. And then, yeah, that's kind of my spiel for future film students and my younger self. Just chase your lesson, be proactive about it. Don't be passive. 100%. I I can't, I can agree more with that. Um, film Filmmaking is actually the easy part of the whole journey. It's, it's actually oh, the... True you know, the most easy part to shoot something and then to make them. The hard part is the preparation and then the posts and everything else, essentially. Um, yeah, I, you know, this, I want to keep these type of conversation going because um, I know that the importance of having a community, having people who are chasing after the same dream, um, and then just also here locally i think it's very important like you said to have a uh kind of like a a platform to um for the next generation right for people who right now kids who are uh, interested or thinking about stepping into that in that field but having you know a good platform can support them uh Whatever they do, right, it's very important. I know HIF is in the forefront of that. But I appreciate you, J.O., for talking to me today. And uh, it's always a pleasure having you, you know, having these conversations with you. Uh, excited to see what you have to do, you know, in the future. Um, so I'll just put your social link down below so people can go see your work. Can people watch uh, some of your film? I know some of your films are on YouTube, right? Yeah, um, pretty much every project that I've worked on up until Kunyari is on YouTube. Kunyari is the only one that we're still kind of waiting to put out for public streaming, only because we wanted to go through the full film festival cycle where we see what else it can get into. But probably 2025, maybe 2026, if we're lucky and we get into so many festivals. So yeah, just look out on my YouTube channel for all the films that I've made in the program that Daniel and I went to for college so far. All right. And before well, that. Mm -hmm. All right, Joe, I appreciate you. Uh, I'll for sure talk to you soon about more exciting stuff. Thank you, Daniel. Keep in touch, man. I appreciate you too.